They are checking to find out exactly how many people have been injured. We are told that the pilot jumped from the plane. He uh, apparently was able to get out of the plane before it crashed into the Ramada Inn. It also, we are worried that it may have hit a bank in that area. We're checking on that. Linda Ellsroth is live at the scene and she's been checking into the crash. Linda, what can you tell us at this point? Okay. Hi, uh, we are out here on the uh, west side of Indianapolis, uh, out at the airport, where there has been, authorities say, a major disaster at this point. A military plane, we are told, has passed through the Ramada Inn. Now, authorities say they don't know how many fatalities there are. They do say that a military plane, again, has crashed through the Ramada Inn about a half hour ago. With me is Walter Dejak. He is an employee out on this side of town. He says that he saw what happened at this point. What did you see, Walter? Yes, I did. Um Approximately, I work for the United Food Commercial Workers Union. My building is right up the street here, and approximately about 20 minutes after 9, I was coming across the street, across the street to Bank 1 to cash my check. And when I was walking across the street, I noticed this jet come down, who was a mil I believe it was a military jet, come flying across, hit the top of the bank, come skid across the grass into the front of the Ramada Inn. And I have set me a whole lot. I ran back to the building and told the secretaries about it. I ran back down, ran across the street, back over to the bank one, see if everybody was okay. I and a bunch of other gentlemen helped the, se the secretaries out of the building. And from there, I went over to the Ramada Inn, see if everybody was okay over there. We probably pulled a few people out of there. And uh, as I get back earlier, when it hit the building, it just turned into one big flame. And that's what we see at this point. Uh Bill and Kim, uh, right now a lot of black smoke. Uh, they are afraid at this point, authorities say, that the military plane that is inside the Ramada Inn could possibly explode because they don't know what kind of cargo the military plane was on. Now, one authority did tell me that they said several witnesses saw the pilot of this plane bail out. We don't know at this point if he is in good condition or where he was taken. We believe Wishard Hospital. At this point, though, authorities say it is a major disaster at this point. They do know some lives have possibly been taken, they say. At this point, they don't know how many because there were several people inside the hotel, also several people inside the lobby where this plane apparently went in at this point. This has been a live report on the west side, and we'll have further details as they become available. Back to you. Okay, thank you very much, Linda. Once again, reiterating, we do have a plane crash near the Indianapolis airport. The plane was a one-passenger A7 that crashed into the Ramada Inn on the airport expressway at Lynnhurst. You're seeing right now exactly where that crash took place on your TV screen. Now, there are possible uh, numerous injuries reported in this and, and even death. They are closing off streets in the area, so they are asking people to stay away from that area. We will have more for you as it becomes available. This has been a special report, and now we'll take a break before we go back to Dick Wolsey. Crashed just short of the runway and ran into that Ramada Inn motel. There are several injuries, we're told. How many, we don't know at this hour. These are live pictures that are coming into us today from Indianapolis. We're told by the FAA in Washington that the pilot did bail out just before the crash. The plane hit the Ramada Inn at the Indianapolis uh, airport, crashing just short of the runway today. That was this morning. It happened within the last hour or so. Uh, the plane went down right over our truck. We saw the pilot bail out. He came in at the top of the bank and hit here. We came over with the pry bars, pull open all the doors, second, third, and fourth floor down to where we couldn't breathe. Nobody was in there. It looked like the maids had been there. Uh, one pilot came down over there, and he was standing when we ran over here. We haven't seen what, was it a military plane? Yes, no. it was a fighter pilot plane. Uh, two people were in it. And you saw one person get out? One landed approximately 200 yards over here next to this tribute drive. That's the Ramada Inn in Indianapolis. You saw that eyewitness account. This is a videotape coverage. It happened within the past hour in Indianapolis. The FAA in Washington says it was an A-7 Corsair fighter plane. According to the FAA, the pilot bailed out. Uh, we don't know uh, just the extent of injuries at this time. You can see that the damage there is extensive. It happened shortly after 8 o'clock. That would be central time in uh, Indianapolis, presumably people still in their rooms at the Ramada Inn. The area has been completely closed off, and as you can see, rescue efforts now are underway in Indianapolis this morning. Uh, extensive fire at the Ramada Inn, as well as extensive damage when the plane apparently crashed right into the motel 
at the International Airport there after having landed short of the runway. A lot of shock and panic, obviously, in Indianapolis this morning. And as we get additional details, we'll bring them to you to repeat very briefly. An A-7 Corsair, that's a fighter plane, crashed apparently short of the runway at International Airport in Indianapolis this morning. Presumably, it may have been part of a reserve unit or a National Guard unit in that area. According to the FAA, the pilot punched out, that is, he ejected from the plane and it crashed into the Ramada Inn there at the runway. The extent of injuries we don't know, but you can see pretty severe fire now and structural damage to the motel. That's going on in Indianapolis this morning. Witnesses that we spoke with in a nearby office building said that they uh, saw, they did see one pilot eject from the military aircraft. Right now, this entire area has been cordoned off. You can still get to the airport if that is your route, but the whole area, as far as exits are concerned, have been cordoned off. Mike? Ethel, I can see behind you there are several ambulances. Can you give me some idea for what sorts of agencies, local, state, federal, have been called to the scene, and how now they, they are able to divide up their duties, and, and what are their priorities? Well, Mike, as you can see behind me, and we'll have Jack Parker uh, work his camera, at, right behind me is a marathon station. You see several ambulances. We literally have every agency in Indianapolis out here right now, the Indianapolis Police, the Marion County Sheriff's Department, we have some state troopers out here trying to handle the situation. We have dozens and dozens of fire engines out here. No one is really certain of the magnitude of this accident that occurred oh, almost an hour ago. As you might expect, uh, this is already the start of the business day at 9 o'clock in the morning. All of the businesses here were filled. There are many office businesses out here, financial institutions. There are numerous hotels. This is not a residential section, uh, but this is very well populated. From what we can see, uh, the evacuations of the buildings did take place in an orderly fashion. There was no hysteria out here. There's no problem as far as the roadway is concerned. We are certain that there are some injuries as a result of the impact of this crash, but we are not certain whatsoever as to the extent of those injuries. As I say, it was a busy business day. The hotel was open for business. We are not sure at all how many people were inside or if anyone inside the building was injured. But we will, of course, be updating you on this story as we receive more information. A rather frantic effort is taking place here right now to get to those people who might have been injured by the impact of this crash. But there is quite a bit of confusion, as you might imagine, Mike. Bethel, just very quickly, I know it's a fluid situation out there and you haven't had much time to confirm uh, the injury reports, but can you tell whether the injuries are at both locations, the Bank One branch and also the hotel lobby? It does not appear that any of the injuries took place at the Bank One building. As I said, and, and unfortunately you can't really see very well from here, when the military jet lost power and began to descend and crash into the lobby of the Ramada Inn, the bottom of the air aircraft skimmed about half of the roof of the top of the Bank One branch here, taking off half of that roof. Of course, nobody was up on the roof at the time, we understand, and we, we noticed all of the Bank One employees out around the Bank branch, uh, and no one was, was uh, suffering any injuries that we could tell. If indeed there are any injuries, they are at the hotel. As I say, the aircraft did not crash into any of the rooms, it should be noted, but it did crash into the lobby, and we just are not certain at this time, because of the nature of the emergency procedures that are taking place, just how serious those injuries are. But we believe that they are confined to the Ramada Inn. To the nature of this, we are going to stay with you as long as we can. Is Mark Voitman nearby? Unfortunately, he is not. He is on the other side of the Ramada Inn here trying to uh, get a handle on just how this could have occurred. As I, I mentioned to you, the pilot was not injured, we are told. He was being treated for some superficial uh, cuts and bruises that he was being treated uh, that he was being treated for that he suffered when he ejected from the aircraft. He is, of course, being debriefed by the airport authorities here, and the airport authorities are on the scene trying to get some information as to just how this could have occurred. And we might add that the military is also on the scene. 
Uh, Fel, stand by, and if you could, ask Jack Parker to give us uh, uh, more of a view of the scene there. And, and while he's doing that, I'll summarize. All right, then. We're going to move Jack just uh, to the right of this area. Jack, we're taking live pictures of the scene here so that we can give you more of an overview of what is taking place. Okay, Ethel, I'll give you a rest. I'll summarize. There has been a plane crash near the Indianapolis International Airport. We are told that the plane was a military aircraft, an A-7. It crashed just short of the runway, then caromed into a Bank One branch, skidded, and came to rest in the lobby of a Ramada Inn motel. Of course, the key question now is injuries. Who was injured? How many? Uh, that has not yet been uh, confirmed. We are told, both by Ethel and by reporter Mark Boydman, that there are multiple injuries at the scene. There are also reports that at least one of two pilots in the plane ejected and is being treated. Uh, information on the other pilot is still uh, developing. State police, many other agencies on hand right now. Uh, Athel, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can, Mike. Athel, do you have some sense for how many people were in the lobby at the time and how much warning they might have had? Well, Mike, I think we can assume that nobody had any warning that this was taking place. Uh, and when I said earlier that we talked with some business people in the lobby of a nearby uh, uh, business to the Ramada, and they said that uh, they heard an engine sputter and go out, and a split second later, they saw the pilot eject and the plane crash, so I don't think anybody had any warning whatsoever. We can tell, at least by the multitudes who have taken up space uh, on the outsides of all the buildings here, that there are literally thousands of people in this area. We have no way of knowing just how uh, packed the Ramada Inn might have been at this time. Most of our uh, airport hotels uh, are... Uh, pretty well filled most of the time due to business trade here in the Indianapolis area, but there are literally thousands of people in this industrial park area who are lining the streets and they drive. It's very common for these planes to be doing maneuvers that far away from home. Now, we do have a report, a Pentagon spokesman says that preliminary information indicates it is, of course, not a transport plane. Again, like Bill said, it is an A-7. It is, that is a National Guard fighter jet. And you're seeing a map of exactly where that plane did hit. It hit the Ramada Inn uh, right along Lyndhurst, uh, along the airport expressway as it came short of the runway. Here's a little bit of what we know about the A-7. It is a subsonic single-engine attack aircraft. Subsonic means it can't go the speed of sound. Uh, it's got a wingspan of about 38 feet, 9 inches to be exact. It is about 45 feet long. Uh, it's only about 16 feet high. It is commonly used as a fighter aircraft. Uh, any number of reasons why it could have been flying over Indianapolis. We're trying to find those answers out now. Uh, it, it is commonly known to be a single passenger airplane, although possibly two passengers could fit into that. We have eyewitnesses telling us that there were two people on board this plane and that one of them ejected, but then we talked with state police and they're telling us just the opposite, that there was only the one person on board and he did eject. He has been taken inside for questioning, uh, apparently at the airport around the, the uh, fifth floor, the administration area. We have someone there checking on that at this moment. We're going to get to Linda Ellsroth. She is live with the scene, but we want to tell you a little bit more about this plane. Uh, again, it, it doesn't seem to be a very large plane. We still don't know where it might have, what base it might have been flying out, or if, in fact, it was flying off of, uh, it was based off of an aircraft carrier. Uh, off of the coast. It, again, it is not uncommon for these planes to be doing maneuvers that far away from home. The plane's primary function is uh, what they call close air support, and uh, that, that gives support for ground troops in combat. Sometimes it's used for a search and rescue plane. We do also know that there are numerous injuries because of this crash. We're checking into that. Some people have been taken to Methodist Hospital. Uh, we don't know if there are any deaths at this hour. We're checking into that, too. We'll have more available as it comes in to us. This is a live special report from New Center 13. Ethel, I, I know this is always uh, frustrating uh, at this time when information is not coming forth. And, and if you don't have an answer, I don't want to speculate, but can you get a sense when we talk about multiple injuries? Are we talking about 1 to 10, 10 to 20, or is there just no way of knowing at this time? Well, when we arrived on the scene, as I said earlier, there was no hysteria coming from any of the spectators or any of the people who did evacuate from the Ramada Inn. There is no way for us to know exactly how many people were in the lobby of the hotel at the time. I got a sense, though, that it was only 
a small amount of people and may have been primarily confined to the people who work at the Ramada Inn. Again, this occurred just after 9 o'clock this morning, just the start of the business day when people are getting rolling and getting out. Many people may have already left for business meetings and whatnot, but we did not get the impression that there were a tremendous amount of people who were injured as a result of this. And we're, we're really not sure, uh, obviously, as you might tell from the pictures, just how far in this airplane made it into the lobby. Because don't forget, that is a brick building, and the plane again lost quite a bit of its uh, parts as it were uh, as a result of hitting the bank one branch building prior to landing in the lobby of the ramada inn so when we went over there uh, uh, to get some pictures uh, about twenty minutes ago we did see the plane's wheels we saw the underbelly of the plane a wing of the plane was already off in a driveway about a half a block away so the the plane lost an awful lot of its parts before it ever got to the lobby of the ramada inn so we're not really sure just how much of the plane actually made it to the Ramada Inn. Now, there were a tremendous amount of, of uh, flames and a lot of smoke. Uh, the engine made it to the Ramada Inn. We know that uh, as a result of the fire that, that just sweeps the, the height of the building. And, uh, but we're, we're not really sure how many people might have been involved in injuries, but we do get a sense that it was not a tremendous amount of people. But any injuries are, of course, uh, terrible. This has been a, a horrendous happening on the west side of the city. Let's do a just a real quick bit of housekeeping here. Ethel, you are our best and only source of information right now from the scene, so we're going to ask you to stand by. I am told that Mark Voigtman is heading your way, and, and he'll probably have some more information that we can add to this story. All right. I am told by producer Tom McCabe that the pilot has been brought to Methodist Hospital, I understand. It. Confirm that for me if that's correct. Uh, we are not sure. We know that, that he was taken away to be treated for injuries and uh, that he was in, you know, for all uh, extremities, that he was in pretty good shape. It's been confirmed at this end of fell that, in fact, the pilot was brought to Methodist Hospital, apparently in, in, in fairly good condition, unless my information is correct on that. Uh, what you can see, if you're still on Jack Parker's uh, shot, the people that you see going before him are... Uh, uh, from the U.S. Army here in Indianapolis. They are MPs, they are military investigators. As we said before, this was a military aircraft. We are not sure whether or not it was carrying any type of uh, weapons or explosives or uh, uh, what uh, intricate uh, equipment it may have been carrying on there. But uh, as I said, military personnel are on the scene and are trying to uh, get some information as to how this occurred and probably to try to group together the whatever was lost on that aircraft. Ethel, at this point there, were, there is no indication, is there, that there was weapons or, or explosives on that plane? Well, Mike, we're really not sure because uh, there was, as, as you can see from our pictures so far this morning, a tremendous amount of fire and smoke that erupted. Uh, ago that the fire is believed to be under control now. Again, a military plane has crashed near the Indianapolis International Airport. The pilot is believed to be safe. Those who are injured on the ground are believed to be transported now to Methodist Hospital, where officials are standing by to take care of them. We'll have more on this story from our crews and from the studio, just as the details become available. This has been a bulletin from Channel 6 News. We now rejoin our regular programming. Uh, you said the scene is fairly calm considering what the situation is like out there. Yes, it does, and we do want to add for any of our viewers who may have uh, friends or relatives who may be working in this industrial park area, there does not appear to be any damage whatsoever to any other buildings in this industrial park. Uh, so if you do have friends and, and relatives who are working in this area, I think that you can rest assured that uh, pretty much everybody else is okay because we have not witnessed or been told of any other damage to any other buildings in this industrial park. And uh, uh, Mark, uh, or rather, uh, Mike, I want to add that Mark Voitman has just arrived on the scene from looking into the tales of this more. And perhaps, Mark, you can add to what is the latest that you know, especially about the injuries. About the injuries is still rather unclear. What we do know is that people in the hotel at the time of the crash were saying that they could not get to the people who were at the front desk. At the same time, other eyewitnesses who were outside the hotel and saw the crash say that they rushed inside and were able to get a sizable number of people out. But in talking to some maids and kitchen help who were there, they are saying they have not seen seven or eight people who are in the area of the front desk 
which is basically ground zero for where the plane hit. They have not seen those since the crash. And the other thing that we've known, Othell, is that apparently the pilot uh, ejected quite a ways, roughly, if you're, if you're familiar with the area, the distance that the Federal Express office is from the Ramada Inn. He, he parachuted over that area, or at least one of the passengers of that plane. We're not sure it was the pilot. The other passenger of the plane apparently ejected after the plane skimmed over the top of the Bank One building. As it hit the Bank One building, someone actually saw the pilot eject at that moment. We're talking about 10 feet over the parking lot. And so that pilot, that passenger of the plane, is not expected to be in very good shape. Well, Mark, One of the questions that, uh, Mike, are you still there? Yes, I'm still there. I have a question, or, or really a fact I'd just like to supply to both of you. Uh, pilot number two, still not clear uh, what his fate was, but we now know that the pilot, pilot number one, did eject safely. And uh, he's been taken to the hospital, but uh, apparently not with life-threatening injuries. Go ahead, please. Uh, I was just going to ask Mark. One of our one of our questions was: uh, Was there any knowledge whatsoever as to how many people were in the lobby of this hotel and how far in, if you're able to tell, that the plane made it into the lobby? All we know is that we cannot really see anything that looks like a plane at this point. There's a lot of debris scattered over a wide area, and uh, it looks like the lobby area, we're talking right underneath the overhang of the hotel, that that is the target where it hit. I mean, it was right on the money, right in the very front area of the lobby. The only thing we know as far as the number of people who were there at the time is from the kitchen help of the hotel. They were saying that there were about seven or eight people who were working in that area, others who were going back and forth. They believe roughly seven or eight people were in that area at the time the plane hit. And as we have said so far, uh, those people at least have not been seen by those, uh, those kitchen help people since that time. All right, and, and we also uh, understand that the uh, military aircraft might have been carrying something, perhaps an explosive or perhaps uh, some type of uh, weapon. That, again, is something else that we're not really uh, familiar on. Uh, there, there is one interesting point of fact, however, and that is that the cockpit, the cockpit of the plane was found uh, over, oh, maybe uh, 200, 300 yards away from... Uh, where the Ramada Inn is. Mark of Boydman. course, that could really indicate that the cover of the, co the cockpit came off as they were ejecting, and that would be the normal procedure for that. Mark Mike, Boydman, did you have I, a question? Uh, if I can cut in just with some more information about that plane, apparently military authorities were notified at 9:10 that aboard this A-7 there was a flame out, and the plane was, was going to have to make an emergency landing about one minute before the crash. Uh, our information is that the there was no engine power. The plane was gliding. Uh, so apparently something, some equipment malfunction. Uh, there was some warning, but not very much. Well, Mike, uh, again, that's, uh, uh, that's the impression that we get from this area. We would like, if you could recap for the folks at home just for a moment, we would like to uh, get a hold of some of the... Uh, and uh, they are still hoping that the plane that uh, is inside will not explode, and that's what authorities are, are concerned with at this point, also with human lives inside. Linda Elsroth, thank you very much. We also have been talking to people who have witnessed this, uh, eyewitnesses to the crash. We have some of their comments. Approximately, I work for the United Food Commercial Workers Union. My building is right up the street here, and approximately about 20 minutes after 9, I was coming across the street, across the street to Bank 1 to cash my check. And when I was walking across the street, I noticed this jet come down, who was a mil I believe was a military jet, come flying across, hit the top of the bank, come skidded across the grass into the front of the Ramada Inn. And I upset me a whole lot. I ran back to the building and told the secretaries about it. I ran back down, ran across the street, back over to the bank, one, see if everybody was okay. Apparently the plane had shut down and was gliding. Uh, we understand that the plane first hit a bank one bank branch sheared the roof off of the bank branch and then we see right there the ramada inn did the plane come to rest initially in the lobby or did the plane uh, hit with force against the entire side of the building what is that five six floors up uh it appears to be let's see 
It's a it's about a seven story building there. The uh, the plane hit dead center in the lobby. There's no question about that. It hit dead at least the engine or the nose of it hit dead center in the lobby, and uh, the fire just just whipped up into the air and and took with it the side of the building there literally burning away burning away the facade of the rooms that you can see right in the middle right in the guts of the the ramada inn we have not been able to see any other damage structural damage that has taken place in any other part of the hotel at this time but of course this um, this portion of the hotel that you're looking at is actually considered to be the front of the hotel the front entrance the uh, the driveway the lobby area but uh, we do know that the uh, whatever was left of the plane as it was coming down, it was a direct hit into the lobby. Ethel, I do not know whether, from your vantage point, you can show us the bank one. I suspect not, because Jack Parker would have already. But for the sake of perspective, can you give us some idea where the bank one is in relation to that shot we're seeing now? Uh, if you probably what you're looking at uh, executive drive here executive drive goes right in front of the uh, ramada inn hotel and if you cross the street literally cross the street on executive drive from the ramada inn you would be in the bank one bank branch parking lot there uh, it's very difficult for us to show you that because there are emergency vehicles literally lining the street uh, here on Executive Drive, uh, stand, many of them standing by just in case uh, uh, something further is needed from them. Many ambulances in the area. We still have with us right now uh, Randy Strode, who uh, was an eyewitness to this crash. Randy, were you able to tell just how much of that aircraft actually hit the Ramada Inn and if there was some sort of explosion? Uh, I don't know how much hit, but there was one big explosion. Uh, it. Uh just within a matter of about a half a second was up to the top floor. So there was a large explosion. Was the plane, or what, whatever was left of the plane, was it on fire when it, when it hit the building? No, it was not. Uh, it wasn't on fire until it hit the building. Uh, when it hit the bank, it looked to be pretty much in, intact. But uh, when it slid across and then hit the, uh, the hotel, it was just in flames. You couldn't see nothing. Cars were on fire. It hit cars. It, uh, I, I hope nobody was in right in front there because it would be tragic. Well, did you have an idea of, as to how many people may have uh, been parked in front of the Ramada Inn or, or how many people may have been uh, in the area? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, the first thing I did was try to get the people out of the bank. Was there anyone injured in the bank that you could tell? No, there weren't. Uh, there was uh, five or six ladies and a couple of gentlemen in there. We got them all out, and they were uh, in pretty bad shape. I mean, they were their uh, morale and everything was real low, and they were scared, and it was pretty scary. Well, it was pretty scary because the plane, as we mentioned earlier, took off about half of the roof of the Bank One branch uh, building here that's across the street from the, uh, the, from the Ramada Inn. But as, as Randy, who was an eyewitness to this entire situation, said, the aircraft, or what was left of it, was not on fire prior to it hitting the Ramada Inn, and then it just exploded, as he said. What you're looking at right now are uh, literally a, a cavalcade of uh, Indianapolis power and light trucks that have come in to, to uh, uh, take care of the uh, electrical needs in this area. This is an industrial park, and it has quite a few power lines around the area. Um, we have with us right now a member of the Wayne Township Fire Department. You have been on the scene. First of all, tell us your name. Neil Flowers of the Wayne Township Fire Department. When did you... Okay, Ethel, before, before you do that, let's talk a little bit about the plane. And while, while you do that, uh, we're, we're going to show some tape. You're looking at the tape now. This is the pilot of the A7 tape Corsair. 20 minutes ago. Okay, this is, this is not the pilot here. Uh, can you hear me out in the field? Quite a bit of confusion at that point. You can see uh, here the fire uh, fire personnel coming in with the uh, with the stretchers to help the injured in the area. Perhaps uh, our member of the our member of the Wayne Township uh, Rescue uh, Fire Department can fill us in on just when did you arrive on the scene and, and talk a little bit about the efforts that took place that we are watching here now on the, on the screen. I arrived shortly after the dispatch of the plane crash. When I arrived, I noticed the front of the building was fully involved with flames, as you see there. Then as I went around to the back of the building, we found uh, 
believe it was the pilot or another individual inside the motel that was on the back of the roof. He was needed to be rescued. He was uh, in a lot of smoke on the back. Some bystanders got a ladder off one of the fire engines and went over and pulled him down off the roof. And at that point, it just appeared that all the apparatus was arriving and making the attack as a, was appropriate. Did you know who that was on the roof? Uh, one person said he was the pilot, another person said he was a, a motel guest. We don't know for sure. Were you involved in the uh, rescue of, of uh, hotel personnel and guests that took place thereafter? No, I was not actively involved in it. I witnessed uh, bystanders, though, jumping in and, and helping with the rescue efforts of the, the people that were taken to the hospital. Do you have any idea? Yes, Mike. Can you ask him if he has a better sense for how many people have been hurt? Yes, I was just about to do that. Do you have any idea how many people might have been injured in the hotel, and are the injuries confined to those who were in or around that area? Uh, last report I had heard we had sent three people to the hospital. It's unknown at this point how many more people would be hurt or if there are any more injuries still inside the motel. To be able to make that kind of determination as to whether there were other casualties inside is to do a uh, rather tedious room-by-room uh, -room search, and that, of course, is compounded by the thick, billowing smoke uh, that you can see on your television screen. Uh, firefighters obviously have to fight that to, to get through. Uh, plus, there is the structural damage that was done to the uh, hotel itself. We are uh, told, additionally, that there was a Bank One branch office, which is... Uh, which is close to the uh, Ramadi Inn uh, that the plane may have sheared off part of. Uh, Linda Ellsworth is on the scene uh, out near Indianapolis International Airport. Linda, what have you learned? What can you tell us now? Tom, uh, at this point, uh, we, as you had said earlier, have uh, been told that there are about 20 to 25 people uh, possibly inside the Ramada Inn who are unaccounted for. Earlier, a few minutes ago, authorities did uh, pull out one body. We do have been told at this point that there is one confirmed uh, dead person. They have set up a morgue, a temporary morgue, on the uh, east side of the Ramada Inn, and they are just now trying to go through the tedious process of entering the uh, hotel at this point because uh, the jet is still lodged inside, and uh, the thick billowing smoke is definitely a problem. They're afraid at this point, authorities are still concerned that uh, whatever cargo um, fuel could be on that jet could possibly explode. That is hindering part of the uh, process here, so they are just really now starting to go inside this hotel at this point. And it has been, uh, again, a very tedious and hectic process for all of the authorities out here. Uh, it is uh, one of the largest disasters that I can recall that uh, we have had out here. As far as from the airport standpoint, we are told that uh, flights have not been delayed or hindered at this point, and we, in fact, have seen several jets uh, landing at the airport. So apparently there is not too much of a problem there uh, at this point. Methodist Hospital. Is there any indication we have some unconfirmed reports from our wire report suggesting that there was a second person aboard the plane? There. Victims are being taken to Wishard Hospital, and our Tracy Horth is standing by at Wishard with the latest on that. Tracy. Barbara, information here is rather sketchy as well. We have been told by officials here at Wishard Hospital that two people have been brought here for treatment. A man who is listed in critical condition, a woman who is listed in... This happened out here at Indianapolis International Airport, Barbara. Okay, Greg, thank you very much. We also have some video for you now of the pilot of that uh, that plane that was taken to uh, that was taken to Methodist Hospital. Here you see Bruce T. Garden. He was the pilot of the National Guard fighter bomber that flamed out near the Indianapolis International Airport today and crashed into a fireball into the lobby of the Ramada Inn. He is reported to be in very good condition or good for his extent of injuries. He parachuted out of the craft before the crash. He is reported to be under treatment now at Methodist Hospital. Well, we will be following this story, of course, for you all morning and giving you all the information we get as soon as we get it. Thanks for watching. The hotel, according to its manager, was still filled with guests. They'd had a very full night there. It was relatively early in the morning in Indianapolis. One of the reporters from WTHR that has been covering this story all morning long for us is Linda Eltzworth. She's standing by at the scene now. Linda, what's the latest on fatalities and casualties? Can you tell us?
Tom, the latest that we have at this point, uh, several conflicting reports. We have been told that there is anywhere from two to six confirmed deaths at this point. Now, we understand that there were 103 people who were checked into this hotel. 50 people came here this morning for some sort of a workshop, and there were about 20 employees inside at the time. At this point, you can imagine it is a very tedious process. You are looking at the hotel right now. Authorities have just entered the hotel about a half hour ago where they are uh, trying to enter it to see if there are any injuries people, uh, any people who are still alive inside. They waited so uh, quite a while before they went inside, Tom, because they were concerned that the jet that is still inside could possibly have exploded. And uh, that was a major concern when they were not sure what the jet was uh, holding at that point, whether there were explosives or fuel that could possibly trigger an explosion. We have been told at this point there are no weapons on board this jet. The pilot, uh, we have been told, is in an Indianapolis hospital and he is in good condition. Uh, we are still uh, having difficulty uh, discovering uh, how many people may be dead at this point, but they have set up a morgue outside. Now, standing Linda. next to me is Janice uh, Johnny Brannon, and she was out here and saw what was going on at this point. Tell me what you saw. I was driving north on Executive Drive, and I had stopped at this stop sign. And if I looked out toward the west, it looked like coming down over the airport 465 area was a man on a parachute, and he was coming down. He looked like he may have even been unconscious because he was just kind of dangling. And then directly coming over the top of him, I saw a plane. It looked to be a small plane, not a large passenger type plane. It came down over the top of the bank building, over the top of my car. At this point, as I noticed the plane was coming towards me, I immediately hightailed it to get away as quickly as possible. The plane came down, took off the top, a little bit of the top of the bank building, and exploded into the front of the hotel. And you saw then the flames and the explosion yeah. at that point? Mm -hmm. That is uh, basically what a lot of people at this point are saying, Tom. The uh, eyewitnesses that are out here, just a loud explosion and the plane coming down. We are not sure at this point whether the weather was a factor uh, in this pilot, uh, his uh, jet coming down. He did radio sometime before he got to Indianapolis for May Day for help, and then the plane crashed. We are told that he did bail out, and we also have been told by state police here in uh, Indiana that he was the only one on board at this point. Now, as you can imagine, authorities have a very tedious process of going through this hotel to see how many people uh, may still be inside. Back to you. Thank you very much. Linda Eltsfroth of station WTHR in Indianapolis and Joni Branham, who was an eyewitness to that crash, with a very thorough account, the plane hit the bank building, the roof, and then went into the Ramada Inn Motel. We are told by the state police that at least six people are dead and at least 20 are injured. Both numbers could go higher. Now, onto the... What this total is going to be at this point. Uh, there are several families here uh, looking to see if there's any word on their loved one's uh, fate. and uh, We're trying to gather them, and at the same time, they're trying to set up a temporary morgue out in front of the building. It's too soon to know how bad this tragedy is going to be, but it is indeed a very, very unfortunate tragedy for this community today. It is one of the biggest tragedies that we, we have heard at this point, and uh, Mayor Hudnett is going around the crowd right the now talking a to a lot of people. He's is... got a little bit more updated information if you want to okay. get him over. Okay, if we could get the mayor over here in just in a second. We have heard, Tom, that the latest uh, unconfirmed fatalities at this point are 11 people, and there are some DOAs at the hospital. David McAnally will probably be able to confirm that for us. Mayor, uh, this is a tragic situation this morning. What can you tell us that you know about this? Well, I think there's been very good interagency cooperation, and there's been a coordinated response, and I want to commend all those uh, personnel who are involved. Obviously, it's a tragedy of immense proportions. Uh, there are multiple casualties and multiple fatalities, but I'm not going to put out a number right now because uh, that would be premature. Uh, people are being transported to hospitals. The pilot is already there. He ejected about a mile down the road, and his plane unpiloted, uh, bounced off the bank roof and then into the Ramada. And uh, there are other people being transported, and, and a temporary morgue is being set up, and those counts will come later. The, the families and the loved ones and the people who have been evacuated from the building are all uh, in a state of great shock and grief, obviously, and uh, perhaps uh, we can tender them our consolation and sympathy and do everything we can to let them know that the whole city is with them in their grief. And that is uh, the teamwork that is going on out here at this point, Tom, as you can imagine, all the authorities uh, working with each other to try to get survivors out of this building. We now go back to you, Tom. Okay, okay. Linda, thank you very much for that. And of course, we'll be getting back to you when uh, more information breaks there. Tom, you have some updates on some of the people who were there at the scene. Yeah, this is uh, some, according to an eyewitness, a fellow named Jim Yanuzzi. He is 38. He is from Flemington, New Jersey. He is one of the guests who was inside the Ramada when the plane made impact. Uh, he was staying on the second floor room on the 
east end of the building. He said he heard a, a big explosion and the entire building shook. Uh, Yanuzi says, I went to the door, opened the door, and the hall was full of black smoke. I went back into the room, grabbed a chair, broke out a window. He said he jumped onto the roof of a first floor structure, then climbed down a ladder to uh, get to the ground. Outside, Yanuzi said he saw a man on fire rolling on the ground, several women running out of the uh, hotel office. Uh, Joe Hayes, who was working in an office building just across the street, uh, said he saw a uh, fireball. Uh, again, the official word from the Federal Aviation Administration in Washington and from Senator Dan Quayle's office is there was a flame out, which uh, preceded the, uh, the planes crashing uh, into the Ramada Inn. And of course, as Linda and the mayor just mentioned, we do not know exactly the totals about casualties. We do have confirmed six deaths there. They are, as we said, setting up a temporary morgue there at the scene. And of course, we'll have an update on those figures. And now let's go to... That information also confirmed this morning by uh, Indiana Senator Dan Quill's office and from the Federal Aviation Administration. And there was a little bit of confusion if you were with us earlier. There was some confusion earlier whether there were one or two people on that plane. Some people said that they saw two parachutes coming down. We were told later on that it was probably a spare parachute that the pilot did have. And as you uh, heard David McAnally say, the pilot Bruce Teagarden is now at Methodist Hospital and he is talking with um, IPD officials right now explaining exactly what went here. 20 to 25 people unaccounted for unofficially. That search continues. We have uh, crews standing by at the scene and elsewhere in the city and we will be updating you with new information as it becomes available. For Betsy Ross at New Center 13, I'm Tom Cochran with a special report. This has been a special report from New Center 13. We continue with our coverage this morning of that plane crash at the Indianapolis International Airport. I'm Debbie Knox and this is Mike Ahern. If you've been watching this morning, then you may know by now that a plane has crashed at the airport about 9:10 this morning. We have a lot of information that's coming in and in fact, we know at this hour from the Indianapolis uh, Airport Authority that seven people, seven people are confirmed dead in the crash at the airport today. They're told by firefighters that as they push through the rubble, they are coming upon a, a couple of bodies here, a couple of bodies there, and we are told even at this late point that the number of dead is still climbing. They have set up a temporary morgue a short distance away in the parking lot. The fire itself is out for the most part, but the search for people and bodies are continuing. Those are some of the relatives and people who are inside the hotel grieving for their co-workers. So there were 103 registered guests in the hotel when the, uh, when the incident happened. 65 were scheduled to leave early, so uh, we don't know how many were in there at that time. There was a 220-room hotel. There is a possibility that there are more casualties. Now let's go over some of the numbers that we do know about. It is estimated that 103 guests were registered last night. 65 of those guests were scheduled to check out between 8 and 9 this morning. So if indeed they did check out, most of them would have been out by the time of the crash. Also, a spokesman for the Ramada Inn says about 20 employees were scheduled to work today and between 40 and 50 people were attending a conference in the southwest corner of the Ramada. Now, when the plane crashed, it hit the Bank One building and it skipped over and hit the north side of the Ramada. But we are told that between 40 and 50 people were attending a conference in the southwest corner of the building. That would be the opposite corner from where the plane went in. Now, as we said, we do have several crews out there on the scene. Linda Ellsworth... Not only did he fall short of the runway, the pilot missed the runway. He was not properly aligned with it. Perhaps he was missed the m runway by as much as a mile. The weather may also have been a factor in this crash. Remember, the pilot is trying to land this aircraft without power. He is falling out of the sky something like the speed of a rock. We had some low clouds. He came out of the clouds and perhaps only saw the airport when he was 500 feet off the ground. Even if he was capable of maneuvering the aircraft without power, he would have only had a few seconds to correct any mistakes or any uh, errors that he made in trying to get into the airport here. Information is slow coming from the actual investigators sorting out what happened with the aircraft. We hope to have more on that tonight in the news center at 5 and 6 o'clock. I'm Rich Van Wyk reporting from Sky Witness. Now back to the studios with Kim and Tom. That number is 634-1441. Once again, 634-1441. If you have any information on anyone who may have been in there, call the Red Cross office, and they are sort of funneling that information to get what they can. Again, 25 is the latest that we hear from EMTs. We will have more on this story. And, of course, at 2 o'clock, we will be covering live and 
our news conference at the airport with more on this information. Tom, you have more information for us? Betsy, we have some new information uh, just in. Uh, this was developed by Rich Van Wyk, the uh, A7 aircraft, which impacted the Ramadi Inn. Uh, everybody has been reporting throughout the day was uh, an Air National Guard plane. The aircraft was on active duty with the Air Force and was stationed at Dallas Air Force Base in Las Vegas. It was not an Air National Guard trainer. Uh, information on the A7, as we have said, it is one of the oldest uh, military and inventory. It was designed in the early 60s, manufactured in the 70s for the most part. It had actually been rationed out of active duty use, front line use, to the National Guard and Air Guard units. But according to uh, word developed by Rich Van Wyk, it was uh, Air Force active duty plane on a training.